Hello there, I'm Black Bright, and um, sometimes I know that I don't sound as though I speak with much conviction. Sometimes I do if I'm categorically sure about some information. Sometimes if I'm not quite sure where the information has come from, I tend to tread quite carefully. Well, today I'm going to share some information that you may or may not have seen already, but I've let somebody else find the source, and then it just takes the onus off of me if I've got something wrong. Because what he's saying is what I said a few months ago in one of my videos. And now it's been written into law 27th of April, which is two days ago. So I'm going to share it with you. It takes responsibility off of me, which I do not really want, um, just to talk about it willy-nilly. So there you go. Hello everybody, um, today we're going to talk about our rights when it comes to having a mandatory vaccine. Um, the UK Covid laws were changed before all this kind of kicked off and um, one of the words that was used was mandatory vaccination so I wanted to have a look and see what that meant. Uh, mandatory usually means this order to the of UK. some kind and it, when it comes to communicable events I wanted to know uh, what that meant really. So uh, I went and found a British Journal of Medical Practitioners article and it says, the right to consent, is it absolute? So that's what you're looking for if you want to look this up. Uh, it has a legal framework, and it reads, a medical intervention without valid informed consent is a criminal offence, and the physician can be charged with battery. Examples of such situations include treatment against the patient's will, different treatment than the one consented for, and treatments after consenting deliberately with wrong information. And this is governed by the General Medical Council. So... That's the understanding of informed consent. You have to be told the correct information, the side effects, everything that's associated with it, everything that you want to know about it, and give your consent knowing all of that. If they've lied to you, they do it without your permission, they've committed a criminal offence. Okay, that's how it was before COVID-19 happened. Then it talks about what happens about protecting the public against infectious diseases, which COVID-19 is one. Okay. And things slightly start to change now. In order to protect the public from contagious infectious diseases, the Public Health Control of Disease Act 1984 regulates notification of diseases and mandatory treatment of conditions such as tuberculosis. The individual's rights to consent is severely restricted in two areas. Firstly, information about the patient's diagnosis has to be given to the relevant authorities, so that's confidentiality. So you if you wanted to talk to a doctor in confidence, that's gone out the window now because they can discuss you with anybody. Secondly, patients suffering from communicable diseases can be forced to take their medication by supervised administration or involuntary inpatient treatment. So you can be forced to take your medication. That's a vaccine. And it cites here that uh, in the North Manchester General Hospital, the act was used to prevent the spread of TB to the wider public by forcing treatment onto an individual who is not compliant. Okay, so they can do that anyway, yeah? So under COVID-19, so what, what's happened? So I looked at the Control of Disease Act 1984 and I printed it out and it's here. And it deals with, for the first half of it, um, infectious diseases coming through ports, airports, by ship and all that kind of stuff. Um, once you get past that, you'll, go to, you'll, you'll find the domestic uh, stuff, how it applies to us as people, our property and our things. Um, just to let you know that the first thing that will strike you when you look at this act on the government website is that it says changes to legislation. And this has been updated on the 27th of April 2020, so just uh, a day or so ago, um, and it's coming to force on that day. So this is applicable from now. This is in operation now. Um, okay, so what can they do to us? Answer. So this concerns essentially... Um, these orders can be given by a justice of the peace in relation to a person. Um, if they suspect a person to be infected or contaminated, i.e. you haven't had a vaccine, uh, the infection or contamination is one which prevents and could present significant harm to human health. Uh, there is a risk that the person might infect or contaminate others, and it's necessary to make the order in order to remove and reduce the risk. Okay, so that's why they're doing it. So what happens to us? So we have to submit to a medical examination. We can be removed to a hospital or other suitable establishment, taken from your home, 
and taken to a hospital or other detention centre area. Um, being detained in a hospital or other suitable establishment. So that's what they've just said, is that inpatient treatment, but this is saying you can be detained. And there's a bit more detail later on explaining that. Uh, to be kept in isolation or quarantine, you may be disinfected or contaminated. A person wear protective clothing, so that's like an all-in-one jumpsuit, like in Guantanamo Bay or something. A uh, person provide information or answer questions about a person's health or other circumstances. A person's health be monitored and results reported. A person attending training or advice sessions, how to reduce the risk of infecting or contaminating others. Well, that's room 101, isn't it? You know, re-education, um, which you'll have to be, which you'll be subjected to. A person be subjected to restrictions on where a person goes or who they associate with, and the person abstains from work or training. Um, and then it goes on, essentially, to talk about, again, sort of risk to human health and what have you. So they keep repeating that. Um, so that's what can happen to you, and we'll go back in a bit more detail in a second. But I just quickly wanted to go through this and um, to let you know what's happening and what's going to be happening to us from the 27th of April. Um, so with, when it comes to your possessions, your things, it says they can seize uh, or retain your things. The thing be kept in isolation or quarantine. The thing be disinfected or decontaminated, de and the thing be destroyed or disposed of. So that's your thing, that's your personal property. Whatever you've touched because you're uh, a contaminated or infected person, whatever you touch, whatever it is, can be taken. That's all your things in your house. Everything they can take. Um, but what happens to the owner? Well, the owner of the thing, or any person who has had any custody or control of the thing, friends have been in your house, someone's been in your house, your mum's been in your house, um, this relates to them. Everything. If someone has touched any part of your property, it, it refers to them. So, what do they have to do? You have to provide information or answer questions about the thing, including in particular information or questions about where the thing has been or about the identity of any related person or the whereabouts of any related thing. So, you are going to be interrogated. And then it goes on to say about buildings. So much of the same applies to buildings. So they can close your place of business down, um, stop you from trading to remove the risk. Um, and then it says in the case of a conveyance or a movable structure, it can be detained. So if you've got a mobile business or anything like that, it can be detained by the state. And then uh, it can be disinfected or decontaminated. Or in the case of a building, conveyance or structure, the premises be destroyed. So they can take all your things and they can then destroy your premises. Um, we go on. talks about a uh, thing of groups. So everything applies to people. They can take you. They can uh, medically examine you. You can force the uh, medication on you, all that. Uh, and then it talks about arrest, seizure of things, property with no notice to be given. And uh, so essentially all that can happen. But they don't have to tell you that they're going to do it. Uh, they don't have to give you notice. Um, if a justice of the peace considers it necessary to do so, the justice may make order without a person having been given such notice. So it, it deals with um, uh, a person with parental responsibilities, husbands and wives. It deals with society, essentially, that they don't have to give you notice. They can just take you. Um, so they've also made the, they've given themselves powers to um, invent um, offences. So they can invent an offence, create an offence, they call it in here. Uh, they can create an offence for anything that they desire. And also, they have um, given themselves the power for this to be enforced um, permanently. There is no suggestion here that this is anything temporary. Um, uh, so let's talk about enforcement. So what happens when you, how do you commit a crime now? A person commits an offence if the person fails without reasonable excuse to comply with restriction or requirements imposed by the order, willfully obstructs anyone acting in the execution of the order. So if you say, no, you don't want the vaccine, they can't deliver the vaccine to you, you commit an offence. You have to be violent, you don't have to... Um, uh, all you have to do is fail to give a reasonable excuse. Why don't you want it? Because they don't know what's in it. You're having it. No, I'm not. You commit an offence um, straight away. Uh, willful obstruction is just trying to stop them from delivering it to people. Um, I guess. 
uh, or you yourself, so you commit an offence again. Um, and that's a £5,000 fine or up to a £5,000 fine. And each day that that doesn't get paid off that fine, they are allowed to add more debt onto you. Um, uh, but they can also, the court has the power to impose a requirement that a person be detained or kept in isolation or quarantined in a place. So they can detain you, this is part of the thing, uh, indefinitely. It takes a judge to get you out. Um, the person leaves that place contrary to the requirement. A constable may take the person into custody and return the person to that place. They can arrest you off the street, take you to the police station, into custody, then take you to a hospital. Um, that's disappearing people. Your family won't know where you've gone. You won't know where you are. You'll just be, you'll arrive at a hospital or one of these detention centres. Um, do you have the right to prosecute? No, you don't. Um, they have given themselves um, uh, a get out jail free card, so you can't even prosecute them. So if you're wealthy, um, you can't take them to court. Uh, you, in fact, you can't take the relevant health protection authorities to court um, or anyone who's administered anything or anything to do with it, basically. And it says here, and final, but last but not least, uh, Crown Property of Her Majesty, um, this law does not affect them. It only affects you. So, uh, please sign up to www.govote.org.uk to vote for the independent testing of any COVID vaccine uh, that they produce, because if this is mandatory, this is what we're going to have to deal with, yeah? So at least you want to know that it's safe, that it's actually not going to harm you, it's not going to give you cancers, it's not going to make you infertile, there's no additives in there, um, because otherwise you're going to commit an offence by saying you don't want it, or you're going to question it. So go to www.govote.org.uk and please vote. We need 10,000 votes uh, to get this in front of Parliament. So it'd be great if you get more. Um, thanks for watching and please share this uh, because people need to know what the uh, Control of Disease Act is all about and the powers um, that they can uh, force on you and the rights that you don't have anymore. Thank you for watching. So that is the control of disease act and um yeah like i said normally i'm quite flippant and i'm non now there's an event of biblical proportion and i'm um non-committal that's because sometimes i get information i'm not quite i'm not convinced 100 percent that it's um accurate and so i like to tread carefully but that is from the horse's mouth that is read from the actual document and so now we know what this test and trace is. Now we know what they've got planned. And um, what else did I put here? I mean, as you can see, that man was very, very nervous. I would be nervous too if I thought that is our future. I think it's very important that we all sign up for that www.govote, one word, dot, or what was it, dot org dot uk www.govote.org.uk so I think it's very important I'm not really gonna speak much on that because it speaks for itself um, it's kind of the information that comes out once again you know you don't want to think it's fear mongering you don't want to think it's something to add to your stress something to make you more anxious but like he said all we need to know is that the um, vaccine is safe and won't cause any irreversible harm, doesn't leave us maimed and all that kind of stuff and doesn't kill us off. So that is where we are at the moment, peeps. Um, not a very pretty picture, but what can we do? What can you do? Is there anything you can do? Is there anything you think you can do? Whew. I've got nothing else to say. That's all for now. Just needed to share the information. As usual, I'm a conduit of information. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.